I believe that if everybody in the world was at peace with themselves and their lives and were happy for them, then that would naturally and inevitably lead to world peace. So my song is kind of a wish towards what I want to see in the world so that we can all first individually be at peace and then we would be at peace as the whole world. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us. Like, comment and share. Yesin, how are you? I am good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Good. It's wonderful meeting you. I'm going to jump right in. What motivated you to participate in Songs for World Peace? So I had the most beautiful time as a student at Berklee College of Music because there were so many people from different parts of the world. And the fact that I could see them coexist in harmony, and even if we didn't speak the same language, and even if everybody's English wasn't at the same level, whenever we did music, we could naturally be one. So that really gave me the idea that world peace is realistic and that it could happen. And when I started Yoshi and Otako start sharing about all these songs from different countries, I was like, hey, can I please represent Turkey? And they thankfully said yes, and I became a part of the whole journey. What is the message and background of your song? What made you write the song? So I believe that if everybody in the world was at peace with themselves and their lives and were happy for them, then that would naturally and inevitably lead to world peace. So my song is kind of a wish towards what I want to see in the world so that we can all first individually be at peace and then we would be at peace as the whole world. So it's actually like a cry for wish uh, well I'm gonna cry uh, but it, yeah it, it's a wish well I wrote this during the pandemic and you know as everyone like when you're alone in your home for too long you start thinking and thinking and thinking uh, so the fact that I could have the space to think about issues that I don't necessarily find the time to reflect on that was a really positive thing for me as an artist so I'm very grateful for that but as for how I got into songwriting, this is actually a very funny story. Um, my my best friend basically started playing piano because I was playing piano. And then in elementary school, we were at the same classroom. But then in the weekends, I was going to a state conservatory program in Istanbul, Turkey. And she soon started going to that program too. But she was two uh, semesters younger than me in that program, but in the same class in the elementary school. Fast forward, we're 13 years old. A guy breaks her heart and then she decided to write a song and she wrote one and it was beautiful. And my little jealous teenager brain went, oh my God, like if Busa can write a song, I can write a symphony because I've been playing piano for more than her. So then I started to try to write music and whomever I shared it with, they were basically like, oh, like this sounds like it could be in this film. It sounds very like in instrumental and cinematic and epic and da, da 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 So I was like, oh, wow, like, is, is, is this a profession? Because I don't think in Turkey, like it's really a profession. There's like one guy who's doing film music and he's scoring every single film in Turkey at that time. So I made this unrealistic goal become a thing. And I started writing more both instrumental music and songs, literally all thanks to that one guy who broke my best friend's heart. So wherever he is, I thank him. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my friend doesn't even do music. She's in psychology and in research. <laughs> um, so and now for the both of us, I'm pursuing music. How did your song and involvement in the initiative make a positive change for you and your surroundings? For me, I always struggle with writing lyrics for social change because the topics that we explore are always a bit taboo. So even if you're trying to be involving and welcoming of everyone, there are always people who get offended by it or who support something that's slightly different than what you're conveying. So I feel like when I write lyrics, it's always walking on eggshells, especially if I'm creating for social change. So being a part of this kind of gave me the courage that like I should ignore it. I should just create what I want to create, because even if people get offended, if I can have one person get inspired, I'm still accomplishing my goal of, you know, making change and creating for meaningful change. So I guess the number one positive thing for me is that Songs for World Peace gave me the courage to do this again. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. I think for the friends that I involved, because I didn't do this project alone, I wrote the uh, music and lyrics and did the arrangement alone. 
but uh, we had two beautiful singers from Turkey who took part in this, Alize and Mahir. Alize is the main vocalist, Mahir did the background vocals, Mahir also mixed the song, and then I had a Turkish friend who lives in Milan did the music video, so it was like all of our joint efforts. Um, and I feel like anytime I'm in a situation where I'm creating with friends, I'm like overjoyed. So I was able to bring them in, which at least for them, it was a good thing. Um, and then for my community, um, I think it's always fun for my parents to see me get to do things in a way that I represent Turkey. Um, so it was cool for them to also witness my creative process because I worked on this during the pandemic. So I was at home in Turkey with them. And they got to be a part of it. Whenever I'm home, I'm always like listening to them as a second pair of ears, third pair of ears. I'm like, how do you like this? Should it be like this, like that? Do you like this instrument? Should I mute it? Should I not? So it was it was so fun uh, having them be a part of it too. My surroundings? I don't know about that because whenever we put art in the world, it becomes theirs. And we don't necessarily get to know how people perceive it or what kind of a change it makes. But I hope that it inspired people to think on things and it evoked conversations uh, because honestly like that's the goal of art right like you don't say things in a um, very direct way you say it in ways that it would make different people think different things um, so I hope to evoke meaningful conversation around the subject matter for me like it was so powerful to see all these countries being represented in this amazing initiative and I don't know, it reminded me of what a colorful world we have and like how culturally um, diverse we are. So getting to be a part of that was amazing. And, you know, actually, I think there are two songs that represent Turkey. And it's so good that there weren't distinct rules and it's okay for two different artists to represent one country. Like that's how we should be as world, more welcoming and open to each and every one of us. So I feel like Utaka and Yoshi are being like such great examples for artists, countries, everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Like nice. Surroundings have a lot to learn from them. And what would be a potential impact that you and your music could make to the world? First of all, I really want to inspire younger girls and other women that it's okay for us for us to have big dreams and we all have the intelligence and talent and skill set and courage. Like we, we have all that to make it happen. And right now I'm surrounded by so many women who are doing so many amazing things in their fields. And I want to be one of them in my field. Uh, so I guess my number one goal is to, you know, be an inspiration to kids and girls and all sorts of international women. And then I work as a film composer. That's my main profession. A lot of projects in the media right now uh, we see a lot of violence and I feel like the violence in the world is also sadly inspired by what we see in media. So I want to be more selective with the projects that I choose and I want to work on projects that more highlight kindness and positivity and the good in the world. Uh, so both with my music and with the projects that I choose to be a part of, um, I want to be a part of a positive change. But a goal or a dream for me would be to... Um, work on projects in which we build these other worlds that generations of different people admire. As an example, like Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. I feel like those projects speak volumes to so many people from around the world and so many different generations. And art means so much more when it, it doesn't just resonate with one group of people, but with such a big group of people. Uh, so my goal would be to be a composer in creating such a world. And even if people don't know my name uh, or me as an artist, like just because they know of this project, they would naturally know my music. So that would be a big goal. And I was just yeah. at the Williams concert yesterday. So like seeing 17,000 people shaking uh, lightsabers to Star Wars music. I mean, what can be bigger than that? Right, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And to have that impact. What are the challenges um, for you to be involved in social change as an artist? And how could Songs for World Peace help you in the in those challenges? Yeah, I think the first one is definitely like I mentioned, it was hard for me to write lyrics because we we're always like, ooh, ooh like, is it going to offend anyone? And when I filter myself too much, I feel like what comes out from me is not as poetic or artistic. So just Songs for World Peace giving me another platform to do this was helpful in encouraging me. And also 
I think every artist is a little bit like this, but we have so many ideas. We want to create so much. So if I wanted to write a world peace song just for me, honestly, I would probably start six different songs. They would all be different. None of them would be finished because I wouldn't have a deadline to finish it for someone. Like my own projects always suffer because I'm not good at keeping my promises for myself. But when I promise somebody else and like when my music is a part of something bigger, like songs for world peace, then I do deliver and I do finish. So thanks to them, like I now have another meaningful song out in the world. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And it gives you the motivation. <laughs> Absolutely. Like seeing all my Berkeley friends be so productive in the pandemic. And I think it's our responsibility to like use the healing power uh, of music and doing good in the world. And I'm so grateful for this platform that it allowed us to do that in such a hard time, which was the pandemic, because this started in 2020 and I was in that first year of songs that got released. So it was really motivating to see this come to life. What is your goal as an artist? My goal also comes from my parents. So my parents are both doctors and I've seen how hard they work. And uh, seeing them growing up, I always promised to myself, I'm going to have such a career that even if I work 24-7, I will never work a single day of my life because I'll enjoy my work so much. And I think I kind of achieved this. But I realized that I recently started conducting and conducted brings a whole other level of joy that I didn't know was possible through composing. So moving forward, I really want to balance both of them uh, because composing and creating something from scratch and collaborating with filmmakers and getting to understand their vision and like creating within those limitations, but something brand new, that's so fulfilling. But also at the same time, like being a conductor and being on stage and conducting in front of, I don't know, 3,000, 5,000 people and getting to instantly see their reaction or little girls coming to you saying that, oh my God, you're the first woman conductor I've ever seen in my life. Like that brings a whole different kind of joy. And in order to keep my own promise to myself, which is to always enjoy what I do, I really want to balance them both. Yeah. And see that uh, both can be done because some people do perceive you as like jack of all trades master of none but I think in today's world like so many people do so many different things in different fields and I feel like at least all I do is in music so it's still more condensed and it still makes sense and it doesn't need to be perceived as like drastically different things and be and to be an inspiration to young kids that's awesome and that's what I want. <laughs> Anything that you would like to promote or put out there? Are you doing any projects, any events? Um, I have some exciting announcements that are coming that I can't fully announce yet, but there's going to be a tour in the fall. Um, and then I will have a movie coming out on Hulu. Um, but the things that I can advertise that I'm excited about, there's a brilliant pianist from Latvia. Her name is Zintra Erliha. And she just released an album called Dreamscape, consisting of woman composers' music. And a lot of my music is in that album, alongside so many other women composers I admire. So please listen to that. Um, and also in Turkey, we're soon opening our first ever scoring stage, which means that it's a studio that's big enough to record orchestras. Because Turkey didn't have this. So whenever they were doing orchestral recording sessions, they would rent a big concert hall and then uh, they would record them there. Or they would record in smaller studios, but in a way that you first record brass, then strings, then woodwinds. So like you don't get to record all together. But now they're having this giant studio. Uh, it'll probably open around March, April. And I got asked to write music for its inaugural recording session, which I haven't started writing yet because it's in March, April, but that's what I will work on soon. So I'm very excited about that. Nice. How exciting. And have a great rest of your day. It was nice meeting you and had a great time. Me too. <laughs> All right. Bye. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us.